This patient is a 22-year-old female with a history of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, sinus bradycardia, and ventricular fibrillation. Her previously placed dual-chamber implantable cardioverter defibrillator was at elective replacement indicator, and an ICD generator change was performed. Informed consent is obtained while discussing the plan for the procedure as well as the risks involved. The patient is brought into the electrophysiology laboratory and defibrillation patches, grounding pads, ECG leads, blood pressure cuff, and oxygen saturation monitor are applied. The patient's ICD is interrogated. Threshold, sensing, and impedance values are checked. Tachyarrhythmic therapies are turned off. Sedation is provided with either conscious sedation or general anesthesia as per patient and physician preference. Intravenous antibiotics are given within one hour of the start of the procedure. The patient is prepped in the standard fashion. Sterile draping is applied. The electrocautery is set up. We use 35 watts for cut and coagulation with the Blend 3 setting. The equipment needed for the procedure should be immediately available, including a local anesthetic such as lidocaine with needles and syringes, scalpel and electrocautery, retractors and clamps, pacing cables and suction, new ICD pulse generator, the table should be well organized to easily find the tools needed. The operator performs a sterile scrub. Sterile gowns and gloves are placed. The scar from the previous surgery is marked as the location for the new incision. The sternal notch, deltopectoral groove, and clavicle may also be delineated. Lidocaine is used for local anesthesia. An incision is made with a scalpel. This patient desired removal of a hypertrophic scar, so an elliptical incision is made surrounding the scar. All bleeding is cauterized as the hypertrophic scar is removed. A Wheatlander retractor is placed, and using electrocautery, dissection is carried down to the ICD pocket. The old ICD generator is found. A finger is used to dissect the tissue from the generator, and the ICD is removed from the pocket. If extra slack is needed to remove the generator, care is taken to minimize use of electrocautery on the leads to reduce the chances of an insulation breach. The leads are disconnected from the old generator using a wrench. Alligator clips are attached to the leads. The red clip goes on the ring and black clip on the tip. The leads are checked through the pacing system analyzer for sensing, threshold, and impedance. The new generator is attached to the leads, with care taken to ensure the pins are past the set screw when the wrench is used, and that the pacing and shocking pins are placed in the correct ports of the header. The generator is placed in the pocket. The header should face upward. The ICD pocket is copiously irrigated with antibiotic or saline solution before or after the generator is placed in the pocket. Some operators will also remove or score the pocket. The deep tissue is closed with two to three layers of running or interrupted sutures. Defibrillation threshold testing can be performed if desired. An external defibrillator is available and charged as backup. In this case, a pacing train was delivered and a T-wave shock induced ventricular fibrillation. A 16-joule shock through the ICD was delivered which resulted in normal sinus rhythm. Needle and sponge counts are completed. The superficial layer is closed with a layer of absorbable suture. After the area is cleaned, skin glue is applied. The drapes are removed. 
a dressing is placed. Final device settings are programmed for tachycardia and bradycardia therapies. The patient is transferred off the table and to the recovery area. The procedure is then complete.